Anxiety doesn't just destroy your happiness and well-being. If it's long-term, it can even have serious effects on the actual structure of the brain itself. These effects can impact overall brain health, cognitive function, and emotional regulation. This is particularly important for the business owners, entrepreneurs, and professionals that I work with who need to be as mentally sharp as possible to reach their full potential in their professional and personal lives. In this video, I'll be breaking down five ways that anxiety affects the brain and stick around to the end because I'll be giving you some concrete steps that you can take to reverse this anxiety if you are concerned that it may be having an effect on you. And on the subject of anxiety and the brain, we're currently offering a 12-week cognitive reprogramming course, which is allowing entrepreneurs to tackle their anxiety at the very root and eliminate it in as little as eight weeks. If that's something you're interested in, then please go ahead and click the link in the description below this video. You can book yourself on a roadmap call and we'll see if the cognitive reprogramming method is a good fit for you. With that said, here are the five key ways that anxiety can impact the brain. Number one is impaired cognitive function. And of these, memory can be a real issue. And as I'm sure you can relate, when your mind is full of anxiety, you have all kinds of intrusive, negative thoughts flying around, it's very hard to process things very clearly. And you may be taking in bits of information, but it's really hard for you to recall them or to store them accurately because there's so much interference and clutter going on in your mind with all these anxious thoughts and worry. The second part of impaired cognitive function is difficulty concentrating. And I'm sure you can relate that when you've got a lot of worry and anxiety in your mind, it's so hard to actually focus on the task at hand. Your mind keeps getting pulled off topic with all these negative intrusive thoughts and worry that we have going on. So it's very hard to focus in. It's very hard to do deep work. It's basically impossible to ever enter the flow state because you have so much clutter and interference from all these worrisome thoughts that are going on in your head. The second way anxiety affects the brain is it can actually change the structure of the brain. And I know this might sound quite scary and worrying because it certainly was to me. And Chronic stress and anxiety can actually alter the architecture and may shrink certain areas of the brain, such as the hippocampus, which is very important for memory. In my own country of the UK, London taxi drivers are known to have a very large hippocampus because they have to memorize the map of London streets so they know their way around every little side street. And because of this, their hippocampus is enlarged. Well, when you have anxiety, the opposite of this is true. It actually shrinks down the hippocampus, which is why you may have found that you have trouble with your memory because you are so anxious. Aside from memory, the hippocampus is also very important for emotional regulation. And this is why you see people with anxiety are often more prone to depression because the function of the hippocampus can be impaired and it leaves you more vulnerable to things like depression and unstable moods. Another part of this change to brain structure is having an overactive amygdala. And you may have heard of the amygdala as the fear processing center of the brain. It's almost like the alarm center of the brain. And when you have chronic anxiety, this is like an alarm which gets turned up and left on. So even when there is no threat you just feel in a constant state of fight or flight and I know I lived like that for much of my life and I'm sure you can relate to this if you're watching this video. The third impact is neurotransmitter imbalance and this applies to things like serotonin and dopamine and as I'm sure you know both of these neurotransmitters are very important for regulating mood, influencing how good we feel, how much we want to pursue a goal and the pleasure that we receive from actually attaining that goal and what you'll see in sufferers of chronic anxiety is that these levels are imbalanced and it leads to things like irritability, mood swings, and low mood. In serious cases, it can even lead to anhedonia. And this is something I experienced myself. And it means that you're basically unable to feel any pleasure. Your mood is completely flat. Things that would normally bring you a rush of dopamine or enjoyment, like a bar of chocolate or achieving a goal, just have no impact on you. So it's a feeling of just total emotional flatness. There is no joy to life at that point. Another part of this neurotransmitter imbalance is an excessive production of cortisol. And I'm sure you've heard of cortisol as a stress hormone in the body. And I've talked in other videos about how certain things in the body can be catabolic. And cortisol is a catabolic stress hormone, which means if you have excessive levels of this in your system constantly, it can break your body down on a cellular level. And it also breaks down parts of the brain, such as the hippocampus, as we've talked about. And this will lead to problems with memory and cognitive function and also emotional regulation. Cortisol can also affect the prefrontal cortex, which is the region of the brain responsible for higher level functioning. So this can really impair your decision making and your ability to think clearly and effectively. The fourth impact is increased risk of mental disorders. And this applies to things like depression and generalized anxiety disorder. If you have chronic stress or anxiety long enough, this leaves you vulnerable to depression. And that's why you see these conditions are often comorbid. That means they exist together or co-occur. And you find that depressed people are often anxious and anxious people are often also depressed. If anxiety is left unchecked long enough, it can also develop into GAD or generalized anxiety disorder, which is just a pervasive sense of anxiety, even when they're is no actual stimuli or stressor around. 
And fifth and finally, anxiety can affect the brain's ability to regulate sleep patterns. And I'm sure you know in your own life, even small amounts of anxiety can lead to sleepless nights, you waking up at three o'clock in a sweat, thinking about things or worrying about work. And this is because anxiety actually affects the ability to regulate sleep and get high quality sleep, which as we know, is the foundation for all mental health. And this can actually also create a vicious cycle where lack of sleep leads to increased cortisol, which leads to increased anxiety, which then leads to lack of sleep. And then that also leads to impaired cognitive function. And this is the syndrome you see in people where they feel like everything is just spiraling out of control. They can't get a good night's sleep. They wake up more anxious. They can't think clearly at work. Things seem to be going down the pan. But those are the five ways that anxiety can impact the brain. And I hope I haven't painted too gloomy a picture. It shouldn't be gloomy because all of this is reversible if it's caught early enough. And in in order to reverse this, if you feel that you're struggling with these problems and you're concerned that your anxiety may be having an impact on your brain, then please go ahead, click the link in the description below this video. We can jump on a roadmap call and we can discuss the cognitive reprogramming method, which is helping anxiety sufferers eliminate anxiety at the root cause by dealing with the issues that they have in their mind and the faulty software that they're running. And we can discuss on the call if this would be a good method for you and if the program would be a good fit. So by all means, go ahead and click that link.